Hello, hello, my name is Callista, and welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. In the last episode, we helped Matthias, the son of the previous owner of Shale, to save his daughter, and in return, he gave us the correct activation code for Shale. But was he telling the truth? Let's find out. Dulen Harn. Hello. There we go. I knew that the day would come when someone would find the control rod. And not even a mage this time. Probably stumbled across the rod by accident, I suppose. Typical. Uh, hello to you too. And how do you know I'm not a mage? Because you're a dwarf, Artin. I did not just stumble across it. You could be more thankful, you know. I don't know how much of a personality the remaining golems in Orzama have, but I doubt they're anything like Shale. Uh, hello to you too. I stood here in this spot and watched the wretched little villagers scurry around me for, oh, I have no idea how long, many, many years. <sighs> I was just beginning to get used to the quiet, too. Tell me, are all the villagers dead? Not all of them, no. I take it that wouldn't concern you. Not all of them, no. Some got away, then. How unfortunate. Do you have a name? You didn't care for them, I take it. Did you watch the attack? That's horrible. To be fair, they've been treating this thing as a, a dress-up statue. And if it was conscious for all of that, ugh. Did you watch the attack? Not as much as it would think. There was running and screaming and then days and days of watching the darkspawn prowl around. I would never have thought there could be something less interesting than the villagers. But there it was. Well, go on then. Out with it. What is its command? Do you have a name? Why are you calling me it? I'm told you killed your last master. You'll follow my commands with you. Will you, excuse me? So we know that it's called Shale. Uh, Matthias told us as much. Hmm. Why are you calling me it? Entrenched sense of perversity. The last one who held that damnable rod used to call me Gollum. Gollum, fetch me that chair. Do be a good Gollum and squash that insipid bandit. And let's not forget, Gollum, pick me up. I tire of walking. It does have the control rod, doesn't it? I am awake, so it must. Is something wrong? It certainly does, right in its hand. Don't get any funny ideas, Gollum. Is something wrong? I see the control rod, yet I feel... Go on, order me to do something. Alright, walk over there. What? Why? I don't like where this is going. Alright, give Zevran a hug. But let's not just order this thing to invade Zevran's personal space. Alright. Walk over there. And, uh, nothing. I feel nothing. I feel no compulsion to carry out its command. I suppose this means the rod is broken? Shouldn't you be happy about that? Can it be fixed? So what now? You go on a killing rampage? Well, you're not just walking away. So maybe this is why Shale has so much personality, because the control rod isn't suppressing all of that. Hmm. I mean... Hmm. Not number three. That kind of seems like asking for trouble. If Shale hadn't considered going on a murderous rampage and then we suggest it, it might go and do that. And four is a little too authoritarian for my liking. Shouldn't you be happy about that? Hmm. I suppose if I can't be commanded, this means I have free will, yes? It is simply, what should I do? 
I have no memories beyond watching this village for so long. I have no purpose. I find myself at a bit of a loss. What about it? It must have awoken me for some reason, no? What did it intend to do with me? I hadn't given it much thought. I can think of many uses for a personal golem. I don't intend to do anything with you. Why isn't the I intended to use you to fight the Darkspawn? Because she, she did have intentions for the golem, so not three. But it wasn't, as she's, it wasn't like, oh, I get my own personal golem. It was like, this thing will be really useful. And she has given it much thought. Oh, no. I don't like any of these options. Oh, like, because number two just sounds like we're going to use this thing as our personal butler. And that was never the intention. I, I think I have to go with number one. It's like the lesser of two evils. I hadn't given it much thought. I see. Wonderful. I suppose I have two options, do I not? Go with it or go elsewhere? I do not even know what lies beyond this village. You're welcome to come with me. Are you going to keep calling me it? What do you want to do? You killed your former master, and how do I know you can be trusted? We don't really need your help. What do you want to do? I watched this village for so long, unable to move or act. My memories of anything before are vague at best. So I have no idea what I want to do. I'm glad to be mobile. Is that not enough? You killed your former master. Did I? I remember that I had a former master. The mage with the furry brows who poked and prodded and barked orders. Did I kill him? I hope I did kill him. Perhaps the last order he barked was, Gollum, stop crushing my head. Ah! <laughs> I notice you don't call him it. That's rather heartless of you. That's hardly a recommendation. I like a little bloodthirst. So that is a little bit disturbing that, you know, I hope I did kill him. But at the same time, we do know that he was experimenting on Shale. And that the demon that he was keeping in his basement might have been having some kind of negative effect on Shale. So, I mean, if I was being experimented on by a, a guy who wouldn't call me by my name, I'd, I might kill him. Who knows? I notice you don't call him it. Yes, I'm just funny that way. Are you going to keep calling me it? Yes, very likely. How do I know you can be trusted? How, how do we know anyone can be trusted? I mean, if we brought the assassin with us, why shouldn't we kill the, the potentially murderous golem? You're welcome to come with me. I will follow it about then, for now. I am called Shale, by the way. I am Artin, pleased to meet you. Shale, is that supposed to be a joke? Is that your name or what you're made of? If you're following, then we're going. I am Artin, pleased to meet you. This should be interesting. Now then, I think... Of course. I'll, I'll swap out when... Yes. Ooh, and levels. Excellent. Now then. <laughs> Two cunning, one dexterity. And ooh. I'm going to grab myself Master Combat Training. And... F I'd, I never take Feign Death. It never seems that useful to me. Ooh, that's a passive. Oh, oh, hang on. Yes, please. Device mastery. Love it. And Sten, that is to strength, one constitution. <laughs> Critical strike or shattering blow. Ooh, I, again, I like me some passives. Okie doke. That is everything. Now then, shale, my dear. We actually have equipment for you. 
Okay, so that is 1080. That's 14. So that is the best. And these are all flawed. Oh, we do have a flawless, but Shale doesn't have enough strength. Okay. In that case, we'll, uh, we'll double, double down on the nature, get that uh, item set bonus. Okie doke. Righty, yo then. Ooh, uh, thank you for the save game. Now then, I'm pretty sure we've gotten everything we can from Honleith. Yep, we got, we got the cheese knife. Yeah, let's let's just head out. No. <laughs> I like how it just stands there like what? I I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. What? And I, I know we just did party camp talks, like, literally three episodes ago, but we've got a new party member. Like, how can I not? I have been studying Mother's Grimoire. Oh. Do you wish to hear what I have found? If you must, can we discuss it another time? What did you find? What did you find? Tis not what I expected. I had hoped for a collection of her spells, a map of the power that she commands. But this is not it. So it was for nothing? Yet you look disturbed. Disappointed then? Yeah, she had a very peculiar expression on her face. Yet you look disturbed. Disturbed? Yes, perhaps that is the right word. One thing in particular within her writings disturbs me. Here, in great detail, Flemeth explains the means by which she has survived for centuries. A spell of immortality? That should prove useful, no. Let me guess, she drinks blood, eats children? A spell of immortality? Oh, if only it were so. Flemeth has raised many daughters over her long lifetime. There are stories of these many witches of the wilds throughout chastened legend, yet I have never seen a one and always wondered why not. And now I know. They are all Flemeth. When her body becomes old and wizened, she raises a daughter, and when the time is right, she takes her daughter's body for her own. Oh. Are you certain about this? So is Flemeth immortal or not? I'm not sure I understand what you mean, so why would she risk sending you with me? So what do you intend to do about it? And you had no idea, I'm so sorry. I don't think number one, because I I don't think Morrigan would read something once, be like, oh, this, you know, like, oh, I think this means this, and then just leave it. I think, especially something this grave, I think she'd double check. I, I don't want to um, question Morrigan's intelligence. So is Flemeth immortal or not? Whatever spark of the demon that made her what she is remains within her keeps her from dying of old age, but her body deteriorates, eventually she would be so wizened as to be senseless and immobile. So she must seek a new body, a fresh body, and start the cycle anew. Can this body be anyone, or must it be a daughter? Yeah, I, I'm i happy to go down this route. Can this body be anyone? Or must it be a daughter? I am uncertain. According to her writings, certain hosts are better than others. The more a host is prepared, the quicker the transition will be. I am sorry. This simply takes me by surprise. I would have thought I would have had some inkling, some notion. You really had no idea. You and Flemeth were hardly friendly. No one thinks the worst of their own mother. I would feel the same. What an awful thought. You really had no idea? Flemeth is capable of many things. I was a fool not to suspect her capable of using me for her own self-preservation. 
So why would she risk sending you with me? I do not know. Perhaps tis as she said, the Darkspawn threaten her as much as they threaten anyone else. Or perhaps she believes that this journey will make me more powerful. According to the tome, if the host is already powerful and trained in magic, it takes far less time for Flemeth to settle in. So if you died, she would have another daughter? Not by any natural means. Perhaps I should take this as a vote of confidence from her on my capabilities? Or perhaps she simply wished me gone from the Kolkari Wilds so she could prepare her ritual in peace? A disturbing thought. Hmm. I don't think now is the time for platitude and the- Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry about this. No. Morgan needs to do something about this. So what do you intend to do about it? There is only one possible response to this. Flemeth needs to die. I will not sit about like an empty sack waiting to be filled. Flemeth must be slain, and I need your help to do it. Perhaps you should talk to her about it first. Kill Flemeth, isn't that a little extreme? Why do you need my help? Can this not wait until another time? Forget it, I'm not going to help you kill your mother. Very well, I'll help you if I can. So, Artin has been travelling with Morrigan and Alistair for the longest. Out of any of the people in her party, she is the most attached to them. I... We are going to agree to help her, but I do think Artin would be like, why do you need my help specifically? Why do you need my help? Because if she is slain while I am near, I am not certain that she will not simply be able to take possession of me right there. So obviously I cannot be the one to do it. Okay. Fair. Very well. I'll help you if I can. Then what needs to be done is for you to go back to Flemeth's hut in the Kakari Wilds without me. Confront her and slay her quickly. I doubt she would truly be dead even then, but it will take her years to find a new host and recover her power, if that is even possible. The thing I must have is her true grimoire. With it, I can defend against her power in the future. Everything else in her hut is yours. Do I have a time limit on this? Are you serious? Kill Flemeth, a witch of the wilds. It sounds like you just want someone to do your dirty work. I'll see what I can do. Yeah, we'll, um... I don't know how soon we'll be able to get to this, but we will do it. I'll see what I can do. I am grateful. The sooner this can be done, the sooner it will set my mind at ease. No worries, friendo. No worries. Okay then, um, you know what, as I'm, as I'm hanging down here, we'll, uh, we'll have a chat with Morrigan first. I await your command. I'd like to ask you something. So? Full of questions, are you? <laughs> Never mind. And is there anything personal? I await your command. I'd like to discuss something personal. We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. Why are you still here? No, no, we are not going to ask that. Never mind. Okay, so we have ran out of uh, options with Morrigan. Okay. Now that we do have Shale... I actually completely forgot um, we had Alistair's mother's amulet. I completely forgot to give that to Alistair. This, this is my mother's amulet. It has to be. But why isn't it broken? Where did you find it? I found it in Redcliffe Castle in the study. I found it on the road somewhere. Your mother's amulet, are you sure... These things are a copper doesn't... No, we, we found this in the castle. I found it in Redcliffe Castle, in the study. Oh, the Arl study? Then he must have found the amulet after I threw it at the wall. And he repaired it and kept it. I don't understand. Why would he do that? I don't know, but it's yours. Maybe he meant to give it back to you. Perhaps you mean more to him than you think. A thank you would be nice. Hmm. Maybe he meant to give it back to you. Maybe he did. He might even have brought it with him one of those times he came to see me at the monastery. 
Not that I would have given him a chance, as belligerent as I was to him. Thank you. I mean it. I thought I'd lost this to my own stupidity. I'll need to talk to him about this if he recovers from his... When he recovers, that is. I wish I'd had this a long time ago. Did you remember me mentioning it? Wow. <laughs> I'm more used to people not really listening when I go on about things. Of course I remembered. You're special to me. Sorry, did you say something? Let's not make more out of this than it is. Ooh. Not number three. I don't know if Artin would go so far as to say Alistair is special to her. She definitely feels something for Alistair. Right now it's kinship. Kinship that she never thought anyone would really understand her on. But I don't think she'd go so far to be like, oh, you're really special to me. So oddly enough, she's gonna joke. She is joining in with his joking. Damn. Sorry, did you say something? Ho, ho, ho. See this gesture I'm making? Can you hear that? <laughs> Where is Alistair now? Plus 75. Okay. Now then, who do I want to talk to first? I think... I think Shale. Shale's just arrived, so we'll make sure that they're settling in. I see it found some augmentation crystals. I was not even aware it knew about them. Well done. So, what does it think? They don't make me look any wider, do they? I find I'm already too wide as it is. No, no, they're quite slimming. I think they're so pretty. They look fine, I suppose. Don't be ridiculous. They're useful. Hmm. They are very pretty. But I don't... I don't know how Artin would respond to this. Hmm. She's probably very confused. As I said, Shale isn't exactly like any of the other golems in Orzammar. And I don't think Artin was, you know prepared for a golem to be like, am I too wide? I think if one of her party members came to her and was like, do you think I'm a bit too wide? I think Artin would try and be polite. So we'll we'll be polite with Shale as well. No, no, they're quite slimming. It must be the vertical pattern it put them in. Did it know to do that? It must have. I think it should find some more as soon as possible. I want to glitter from ear to ear, so to speak. Okay. Oh. What's with the heavy size? You're still with me, I see. I would have expected golems to be different. Hmm. What's with the heavy size? Oh, that. Merely reflecting on the hopeless nature of the task in front of it. The most likely outcome is that it and its companions will become a stain on some rock for the Darkspawn to tread upon. I shall be moved to a single tear by the tragedy. Won't we be right next to your stain? Glad to know you care, at least. I don't think our chances are that bad. Well, golems don't really leave stains, they just crumble. A single tear is something. Glad to know you care, at least. It's true. One single tear, and then it's off to the north, I think. Or maybe west. I haven't decided. What's that? Did it hear flapping wings? There may be pigeons nearby. We should be alert. Okie doke, Shale. Now we did get a codex entry on Shale. Oh. Now the codex. There we go. Now then, Shale and Win. Huh. Okay. Yeah, nothing updated on Alistair's. Okay, Shale. What can I say? I have a heart of stone. The Golems of Orzammar once made up the vanguard of the Dwarven army, holding back the tides of Darkspawn that flooded out of the Deep Roads. But the art of making them was lost, and many of them succumbed to wear and damage in the battle. 
Shale has no memories either of that time spent fighting the Deep Roads or of coming to Honleith, only a few spotty and bitter recollections of its last master. Artin unearthed Shale's control rod and awakened it, adding a bitter malfunctioning golem to the menagerie of companions. When I will not lie motionless in a bed with coverlets up to my chin, waiting for death to claim me. It's perfectly all right to think about the many indignities you plan to inflict on your enemies, but to talk about it, well, that would be unladylike. Wynne's talent became apparent early on, particularly her skill at healing magic. She was well liked by all her mentors and was recognised as an exceptionally gifted student. Even the Templars who watched her could not deny that she represented the best the Circle had to offer. She was an intelligent young woman who possessed a quiet confidence and maturity beyond her years. She spent many years mentoring apprentices within the Circle, and her peers thought so highly of her that she was asked to be First Enchanter Irving's successor, but she refused, saying that she had no desire to work in the upper echelons. When word reached the tower of King Caelan's call to arms, Wynne volunteered to go to Ostagar. For Wynne, the printed word is a window to true understanding. A scholar by heart, she feels that what a people commit to the page is sacred by definition. Okay. So Wynne likes books. Got it. Ashwraith. Legend has it that when Andraste's ashes were taken into hiding, some of her closest disciples gave themselves to the fire that their restless souls might remain to guard her final resting place forever. Whether they are spirits of Andraste's disciples or merely fade spirits, the temple that houses the sacred urn is filled with raves. How do we know this? Created from a burnt corpse, an ash wraith is a powerful and amorphous opponent, able to lash and smother while being immune to most physical attacks. Even if successfully dispersed, it can reform at a later time. Magic is the only real way to fight such a creature, wind and ice attacks being the most useful. They are capable of creating small whirlwinds that are devastating to anyone unfortunate enough to get close, and their touch leaves a person drained. Okay, uh, we do have some gifts that I'd like to give out. Da -da -da. Okay, we don't know who those are for. Remarkable green stone. Blue green stone with a pattern like a turtle shell. So, Shale did mention wanting, wanting to glitter from ear to ear. So, that would be my best guess. Ooh, shiny. There we go. Remarkable malachite. This stone is patterned with odd bands and ripples of colour, like the contents of a witch's cauldron. Ooh, shiny. Gold bar, don't know. That is uh, alcohol. We don't know who that would be for. This. This is for Wynne. A Have a book. Gift. Rose Thank of all lay. So much. Also a book. A generous gift. Thank you ever so much. And there is nothing else. Okie doke. Now then, we've spoken to Shale. Again, I am going to have another round of party camp talks. I might as well. I'm right here. Hmm. I'm thinking... Stan. You called. I have a question. I am hardly surprised. We've already asked if he finds Ferelden very strange. So we could have asked those at later dates. Damn it. Actually, never mind. Very well. No, we don't want him to leave. Let's go. As you wish. Okay. Let's see. Liliana. Something I can help with? I'd like to talk to you about something. Yes? What's on your mind? Hmm. Do you miss anything about Orle? I miss Valroyo. Unlike other cities where the people are the lifeblood and the character, Valroyo was her own person and her people little more than decorations. There was always music in Val Royale, streaming from the many windows, quiet refrains and triumphant choruses, and always floating above that all, the chant, coming from the Grand Cathedral. It was magnificent. 
Is that all? It sounds wonderful. Orzammar awesome is magnificent too. I've never been to Orlay. So while Artin does think that Orzammar is magnificent, Liliana didn't ask us about Orzammar. I've never been to Orlay. If you get the chance, you should see it. At least Val Royaux. Of course there are good things and bad things about Orlay, like anywhere else. Sometimes I miss it dearly, and sometimes I'm glad I'm rid of it. And you will laugh at this, but I miss the fine things I had in Orlay. What sort of things? It must have been a big change moving to Lothering. Do you not have fine things now? Well, we're on the road. You can't really have a great deal of finery on the road. You can't have, you know, it's it's very rare to have, you know, luxuries whilst traveling, especially by foot. What sort of things? Dresses, fine dresses and furs, and shoes, of course. One can't mingle with nobility with bad shoes, you see. Ole is very fashionable, almost ridiculously so. <gasps> but the shoes, living with those ridiculous trends was worth it for the shoes. What's so special about shoes? Shoes are shoes, they're there to keep your feet dry. Oh, I love shoes. Were they ridiculous shoes? As I said, Artin was a princess, but she was also very practical. So I think, I think she would have had like a set wardrobe that someone had probably picked out for her, like an attendant and like, you know, who was kind of keeping their ear to the ground on what was fashionable for when she had to attend a function that would require a dress. But I don't think she ever really paid much attention to it herself. What's so special about shoes? Well, they're, they're shoes. They're pretty. Some of them anyway. When I left Orlais, the fashion was shoes with delicate tapered heels and embellishments in the front. A ribbon, perhaps, or embroidery. In soft colors, of course. It was spring. You've lost me. Oh, that sounds so lovely. Wouldn't that be hard to walk in? Must have cost a lot of gold. Hmm. Wouldn't that be hard to walk in? I wouldn't want to run in it or have to enter battle, but for lounging in a lady's sitting room? Perfect. The shoes made in Orlais were exquisite. Not at all like these clunky fur-lined leather boots you have in Ferelden. Yeah, just look at them. I know, right? So ugly and shapeless. They're comfortable. At least they keep the cold out. Yeah, they're, they're very comfy. They're comfortable. They're sturdy shoes, but sometimes a girl just wants to have pretty feet. Oh, I could talk about shoes all day, but we have things to do, don't we? Oh, Liliana, I love you. And speaking of shoes, where are they? Yes, blue satin shoes. Powder blue satin shoes with long ribbons that circle the ankle. Gold lace trim and dangling gold charms shaped like puppies add the finishing touches. So, uh, Liliana, where you at? There you are. Oh, how dear of you. Thank you so much. There you go. And one last chat. Something I can help with? I'd like to talk to you about something. Yes? What's on your mind? I heard that in Orlay, minstrels are often spies. Where did you hear this? Who cares? Is it true or not? I don't remember. Someone told me this a very long time ago. I read it in a history book. Ooh. I'm not sure how many people Artin would have met that have been to Orlay, so she probably read it in a history book. I read it in a history book. And did you not think that this could be historical fact and no longer true? <laughs> not all minstrels are spies. Most are just singers and storytellers, but some of them are, are what we call bards. And the bards are spies. What's the difference? I thought minstrels were bards. What's the difference? Many use the two words minstrel and bard interchangeably, but to do so in Orlais would cause misunderstanding. Bards are minstrels and more. Spies, as you say. Some say there is a bard order, but I don't think this is true. Many bards work alone or in small groups, doing the bidding of a patron who pays for their services. If there is an organization behind it all, no one knows who they are. 
patron? What sort of patron? Do they spy on Ferelden? Doesn't the monarchy govern them? What sort of services does a bard offer? What sort of services does a bard offer? What do you think? They infiltrate, steal, sometimes assassinate? It depends on the bard. In Orlais, there is much rivalry amongst the highborn. They fight over land, influence, and the favor of the empress. But they cannot do this openly because it is impolite. And in public, they wear smiling faces and pretend to be civil. In secret, they plot and scheme to destroy each other. It is a game completely meaningless to anyone but its players. You were a bard, weren't you? You seem to know quite a bit about these bards. I knew it, you're not just some innocent sister. Were you sent here to spy on me? Um... This, the, the Orlesian game of intrigue sounds a lot like Dwarven politics. I think Artin's like, oh, this sounds too familiar. Hmm. I think, I think if Liliana was sent here to spy on us, we would have noticed something, like her sending letters to someone. You were a bard, weren't you? I have revealed too much, it seems, but it doesn't matter what I used to be. It is the past. But why were you living cloistered... But why were you living cloistered sister? I think there's meant to be an as in there. But why were you living as a cloistered sister in rural Ferelden? I'd never leave that. It sounds too exciting. So that's where you learn to fight like that. Make sure you use your bard skills to help me. Hmm. Not number two. Number three is very obvious. But why were you living as a cloistered sister in rural Ferelden? I found myself in Ferelden and sheltered from bad weather in the Chantry. And when the storm passed, I just did not want to leave. I like to see the maker brought me here. Okie doke. And I am gonna read this codec, codex update. Uh, Liliana, in the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace, and in that stillness I could hear the Maker. A lay sister of the Chantry who can beat the stuffing out of trained mercenaries would be notable enough, but one who claims to have been sent to fight the Darkspawn by the Maker himself is... unusual, to say the least. She joined Alistair and Artin in Lothering, insisting that she would prove useful. There's more to Liliana than had even been apparent at Lothering, however. She spent much of her life as a bard in Orlais, a minstrel assassin and spy employed by the nobles of Val Royaux in their elaborate games of intrigue. Liliana takes care to honour the Lothering cloister that took her in and keeps symbols of Andraste's blessings close to her heart. Okay. Now then, I am just about out of time for this episode. In the next, we will speak with the rest of our party members, but until then... Please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below, and if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista, thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.